Right. Welcome, everybody. Um, welcome Caribbean Rum Chronicles. Um, uh, uh, another edition of our fortnightly show. Um, we are, uh, I'm honored today to have uh, my co host, Mark Woods, with me of Rumbling. Um, uh, Lizette from Grenada will join us shortly. She's um, uh, running a tad late. Um, and we, the three of us today will host a show and um, we're going to have some uh, videos from Manny uh, a little bit later on talking about um, showing us some cocktails in the second half of the show, some some, some spice rum cocktails. But um, we felt as if we always wanted to do a little series um, on spiced rums. Um, as you noticed, I titled it is Spiced Rum, a Dirty Word. Um, <laughs> I thought that it might cause a little bit of a, a, a joke, but it, it, it's, I think, and it's something that we talk about all the time. And um, rum connoisseurs, I, you know, have, they almost um, have no respect for spiced rum. Um, it's not proper rum. And in fact, even under the new EU definition, um, the word rum can no longer be used uh, associated with the word spice. So you can't actually now call it a spiced rum under the new EU definition. So you you have to call it, as we know with some brands, you've got Morgan Spice, you, you know, you, you can have Kraken Spice. So even though it's, I think Kraken still use the word black spiced rum, but I think that's only because they're depleting stock before they have to drop the word rum. Um, and um, but the only you can make reference to say that the product, uh, the product base was rum, but you can't actually put rum in the title and call it a spiced rum um, under the new EU law. So maybe the rum connoisseurs have got their wish. But um, but you know the thing about spiced rum, and we'll call it spiced rum today because I think everybody sort of knows what we mean when we say spiced rum. Is that um. As much as people say, well, spiced rum is not good, it's rubbish, or, or, or it's poor, or it's not a real uh, reflection of, of, of what rum should be, um, all the major players in the rum world make a spiced rum. I mean, all, all the serious, um, pretty much most of them have a spiced rum in their portfolio. Um, and they all uh, pretty much know that the market for spiced rum is absolutely huge. Um, it is one of the fastest growing markets in the, um, uh, in, in, it is, the, I think, the fastest growing within the rum sector. Um, and, you know, many of us uh, would have probably had a spice rum to begin with uh, at our early parts of our careers in, in terms of rum drinking. And um, I'm sure, Mark, you can comment on that as well. But, I mean, spiced rum, I, it, I mean, you, when you talk about how old spice rum is, centuries, I mean, I mean, the sailors uh, the, the, in the Navy and, and, and the pirates and privateers were all consuming spiced rum. And I think pre predominantly was to make the, the rum more palatable. Would that be a fair description, what do you think, Mark? I mean... Yeah, I wouldn't doubt. I mean, I think probably, obviously with the fact that um, spice was part of the, the whole reason for travel, and exploration as part of that whole dip. If there was alcohol and there was and there were spices around, I couldn't I wouldn't see why some spices wouldn't have ended up in the alcohol at some point and and it ended up being that it sat there for a little while and somebody tasted it and thought, hey, this actually this actually tastes all right. Uh you get some of the flavor coming through. I mean I again I don't know the 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 exact historical specifics of that, but I wouldn't doubt that within the Within that nautical community, there probably was some spiced um, alcohol being consumed, and obviously, on the islands, when the rum was was being produced, as you know, in the early days, as you as you said, some of it was not; it was a bit harsh. So finding ways to make it taste a little better by putting alcohol in it um, is, you know, is quite quite likely, and and you know, as obviously, as time has evolved. All the islands, uh, maybe I think more so. Others, I, I know in Trinidad, I don't, I don't know how much spice rum we do there per se, but I know places like Saint Lucia, they have a lot of it. Um, they put Boabande in their rum and loads of other things. Like my friends even spice their own stuff at home. They'll have bottles where they have the sticks of wood sticking in it, 
and they just topping it up with rum every so often. It depletes a bit and they, they add a bit. Hello, Lizette, how are you? Hi, everyone. Lizette talks a lot Hi. about the, the under the counter in, um, in, in Grenada, which is their home spice stuff as well. So, you know? Well, and I think as well, I mean, I think when we talk about the origins That's of spice rum, I think we can <laughs> most definitely talk about um, uh, uh, the medicinal side to it as well, because I think that was another reason um, that we we can talk about why some of these spices were uh, were used. And I mean, if um, if we you know, I, I dated back to 1586, and it, what you'll see in this this uh, share screen here at the moment, uh, and I'll just put everybody on that share screen at the moment. Um, you know, this is probably the world's first ever cocktail recorded, and it was called an El Drac. Um, and and this cocktail shows the medicinal value. It was invented by Sir Francis Drake, hence the name Drac, because that was his nickname. And you see. Those days, rum was agria diente because we weren't, they weren't technically making rum, but it was still a sugar cane spirit. Um, mm. And that was with the strength. The mint was added. They, they said this is the precursor to the mojito. Um, it, mint was believed to be good for digestion and, and help the stomach. Lime, as we know, was a cure for scurvy. Uh, you, may, you mentioned boy, 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 boy. boy, 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 boy. <laughs> boy. <laughs> Uh, and it's a bark, which was, they said it was good for pain relief and, mm -hmm. uh, and a libido. And then obviously sugar to make it more palatable. And um, uh, these were uh, very, very uh, uh, popular in, um, in the whole world of, 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 of medicinal. One of, uh, uh, and so you can see there that... Um, uh, that there was a definitely a, me, a medicinal value. Um, so yeah, and that, and, that, and that bark obviously is 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 part of that. You know, if you're thinking of cinnamon or other things like that, is similar in that it probably would have added some spiced flavor. Sorry about that, everyone. My internet had a moment, but it's better. All right. All right. Yeah. But uh, did you see that screen, uh, Lizette, as well? With the no, I didn't. I didn't. With the different, let me show. Let me quickly show you again, um, uh, which was, which was this item here. Oh, where yes, the old El Drac, where it was about medicinal purposes, and the bark for pain relief, and the lime for scurvy, and the mm -hmm. mint for your digestive system, sugar to make it palatable, and the agrodiente, the early forms of rum. Um, I mean, Keegan uh, uh, Drake. <laughs> Uh, Alex says it's pronounced Drake. <laughs> I'm okay. not sure how it's pronounced, Alex, but that's uh, that could well be. Drake, okay, yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Um, and Keegan says, doesn't spice rum have its origin in bush rum? And I wouldn't have thought. I think bush rum is a completely separate. Um, was a completely separate item than than. I don't. I wouldn't say that spice rum and bush rum would, would have grown with the same sort of origins. Well, uh, I think. I, I think Oh. Go ahead, is it? Go ahead. I was going to say, maybe I'm just assuming that he's saying bush rum, which would be obviously not the uh, moonshine type thing, but something more like what we have here, which is under the counter, which you could say is a bush rum. He's got loads of bush in it with rum. Right, right. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and I have some pictures here which we can quickly show in terms of uh, let's talk about really the origins of how um spiced rums what we know as spiced rums in the caribbean um and i'm gonna put up the, probably one of the most famous ones of all in the dominican republic which is um mama juana um which is it's very very popular in in dominican republic it is exactly what we call the under counter rums um where you have the um the the rum is then steeped with all these various things and with mama juana common ingredients were like red wine, honey, indigenous herbs, tree bark, and herbal tea. Um, and it macerated for at least one week. Um, and again, probably comes comes back to medicinal purposes again. Yeah. I don't but then if you're thinking of things like that, then obviously there's things 
you know, there's a bush in Trinidad called Zeppa Peak, that, which isn't a, a, a bark, but it's a bush that we would use. But as for, that is purely for medicinal purposes. People keep that and drink it as a shot when they're sick. If you have the cold or something like that, you wouldn't necessarily have that as a, you wouldn't use that as a drink to make a cocktail or to, you know, put it right. in. And, and, and this, here's another picture of one called Hein Spice Rum from, from Grenada. Um, made and bottled by Nordica Heinz, Concord, St. John's, Grenada. Right. Yeah, she's a neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> so she'll and, be happy to see that there. Okay. Yeah, and, and a full number and everything on it. Nice, nice, nice. So right. they've even commercialized the whole issue of. Um, of, of spicing the under-counter rums because traditionally yeah, well, everybody yeah. had their own recipe, wouldn't that? And that's typical in Grenada, wouldn't it be, uh, Lizette? Yeah, everybody's proud of their own version of under-the-counter or uh, spice rum, some people, yeah. So, um, and, and there's little things that people put in. If you're a man, often they like to put extra bits for libido, of course, mm -hmm. you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, generally, it is a bay leaf, nutmeg, um, ginger. Uh, let me just have a look at what I've got here. It's well, this one's got one, this lemongrass. This one's got lemongrass. And you say this has got zephyr pick. Was that what you were talking about, Mark? Yeah, so zephyr pick, I've only had it as a bush, but for if you were sick. Yes. And it's not something that, I've, that I would have thought of for um, consumption of from a from a, a, a taste perspective per se. But I guess the way that this is being done, which probably comes back to the point that we were saying earlier of that crossover between kind of spicing for spice for flavor purposes and spicing for medicinal purposes. So or flavoring for medicinal purposes, if you want to call it. I don't know if Zeppo Peak is a spice, but I know that it has, it is touted for having particular me medicinal. Mm. Is, mm. And I think she's got Shadow Benny in there as well. This has got Shadow Benny, which is uh, cilantro, to those of you who don't right. know. Right, Oriental cilantro, Asian yeah. cilantro, big long leaf one. Uh, yeah, and it's actually, yeah. some of the spelling's not the greatest. It's got, it, they've no, got tank, tanker bean, which is obviously tonka. Tonka bean, um, yeah. I don't know what Quef is. And I, when I Googled Quef, it came up with something that I wasn't very fond of, and I hope that was not going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I just not. I don't want to say that, but it's definitely not what you Googled. <laughs> what else? Oh, but um, and, yeah, and I mean, we and, and there was all sorts of others. I mean, this is another one from Grenada. Um, which is, as you can see, infusions in the bottle. And uh, you buy it with the infusions into it, don't you? It, it, yeah. Um, so you actually, it's it's a bit like, I mean, I've got some other pictures here that we can talk about, which is the French style, which is called Rhum Orange, um, a rain rum. And, you know, when we think of Rhum Orange, people think of the one that's most common, which is the one with the sort of orange sort of... Uh, steeped in, in it, but orange it could be any form of spices in, in the French Caribbean. But, but in the French Caribbean, though, I, I see orange as more fruit in my oh. experience with it. I haven't seen it as spices. spices. I've seen it as fruit. And I, I think they do a... That, for me, I think in terms of flavoring rum with fruit, the French are, you know, miles, million miles ahead of anybody else. I've, I've their, their rum oranges are amazing. In my, from my experience, yeah, and um, and when you talk about medicinal, it was quite strange because uh, growing up in Jamaica, my my grand aunt had a bottle of rum um, under the um, under the counter under the sink, and I used to ask her what is it, and it was something like this, and and it was basically a marijuana leaf which was soaked in some white rum. Um, and left there to steep. And I, this was quite shocking for me because my grand aunt, who was a very Christian woman, was very much anti-marijuana, and yet she had this leaf soaking, this illegal plant soaking in, in a bottle of rum. But it was, um, again, very much for, uh, very much, uh, she would tell, explain to me that it's very good medicinally. So that's why it was there. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've never tried that. But in similar fashion, I've, I saw something like that with Zeppo Peak, 
and I was given a shot of it. I had the cold ones. And I mean, I was old at the time. I wouldn't, I, not when I was a kid, but it was great. In fact, it, I don't know if it was placebo effect or not, but a couple hours later, I felt fine. Yep. And Simon for uh, Simon is actually saying from um, to Nick Zabby, Simon is asking, isn't one medicinal already? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you're right there. And I mean, and uh, here's a you know, this is actually in uh, a, a, a picture from Saint Lucia, and as you can see, they're less mm -hmm. good. They give you the ready mixed ingredients, so you actually can just buy the the ready mixed ingredients and just take it home and put your rum on it. Um, and then create your own, create your own spice form. So you actually didn't have to invent your own spices. People would sell you the spices. And um, uh, and I actually came across a kit here, which is in the UK. This kit is twenty four pounds, um, and they would give you twelve spices and botanicals for infusing into rum. Um, um, and that kit, I, I was actually tempted to go and buy that kit because it, but it doesn't look as good as a picture. But I mean, um, nice packaging and and mm -hmm. quite interesting. Um, for something to spice and 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 you know it's not difficult to make your own spice rum. I mean, you know, here's a, a, a sort of um, a typical example of you get your dark rum, you put your vanilla pod in, your cinnamon stick, your star anise, all spice berries, some cloves, some strips of rind from a le uh, an orange or a lemon, and and then you seal, shake it, and leave it for forty eight hours to infuse. And there you go. Back to it, Bob's your uncle. You've got a spice rum. You don't have to to. Uh, we will talk a bit about the commercial brands in the in a in a bit, but very much different from what we see commercially as being sold as spice rum. Um, but uh, also, if you look at the ones that, that we've seen so far, they don't seem to have a lot of sugar added to them, right? Right. In, in right. Grenada, um, uh, Lizard, would you would you find people sweetening there under the counter? No way. It would just be your spices only. You had to it just, yeah. just rum and spices and that's it. But that's because, um, you know, in Grenada, rum is rum. And people appreciate unsweetened rum. They just love the rum in its organic form because they love the flavor of it. So if it was sweet, they'd say it's weak. Mm. Mm. True. Mm. Okay. They say that, well, that's too weak. They like the slightly stronger, even if it's aged, but they want it to be of the slightly stronger proof and, and they want to taste it. They want to taste the harshness. They want, they don't want it to be so rounded and silky, you know. So so do you think that the commercial spice rums obviously taken from that tradition of spicing in that way, this the adding of the sugar is similar to what the the Scottish did with blending of scotch to make it more palatable for non-caribbean people is that would be or just make it more commercially viable yeah i think that the um the straining of the liquid to get rid of the 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 things inside of it um mm -hmm. you know the, the 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 spices and so they strain it and then taste it and then okay we want this to be more appealing to more people mm -hmm. um and if you add sugar as you know it just creates that you get more vanilla kind of notes as well with the more mm. sugar you add and then it's more sensual. So it appeals to a much broader market and they already know that from sweetening other rums. So they kind of, it's a, it's a win-win situation. Yeah, it becomes more like a liqueur, but that's what people like. If the sales are high, then I guess that's... And, that's and, and maybe maybe one of the um, the early culprits of, um, of that, that shift towards the sweeter style and the spice rums he knows today is probably this brand in particular, um, yeah. mm, which is Captain Morgan, 1944, Seagram uh, purchased the Long Pond Distillery and, and they also purchased a recipe from the Levy Brothers, who, uh, who at that time were buying raw rum from Long Pond and adding medicinal herbs and spices and aging it and, and, so, aging and bottling it. So Seagram liked the product so much, he bought the rights to it. And as you know, Captain Morgan now is a huge global brand, um, mm. um, and um, and and actually, you know, let's talk about is spice from a dirty word because this is we're now talking about you know a very very popular. I mean, Captain Morgan is up there in top three selling rum brands in the world. Yeah. All of them. Well, in in my I think as somebody that 
weirdly enough, I didn't come. I came to rum late in life. If some if some people would say as much as I am Trinidad, and I didn't drink rum a lot as when I lived there. Um, I would say that I don't think it's a dirty word. The only reason I, I because it if it anything that will introduce you to rum as a category and make you want to drink rum, at least as a you could see it as a gateway to other things. Now, obviously, some people. It's kind of like you come in the gate and close the gate and stay by the gate. So they never get past the gateway. They kind of hang out by the gateway and they don't really want to go inside the house or walk around in the backyard. <laughs> or anywhere else. The I gate, love your analogy. <laughs> just by the gate. And, but the thing is, though, it's better to have them inside the gate than outside the gate, right? So I prefer you drink rum and not drink something else. At least there's some benefit to the to the to the hopefully to the Caribbean as as a place as a result of the fact that you're drinking spice rum. The fact I think for me, what makes it a dirty word is when people discount other the well non-spice products as a result of well, I like spice rum and I don't want to drink anything else, or I don't like that rum, that rum not nice because it don't taste like this, which is this overly sweetened, you know, heavily advertised product. I think that's where spice rum could be a bit detrimental, almost in a way, like whilst I think a lot of people are grateful for Bacardi as a brand in terms of popularizing people drinking rum, the fact that the Bacardi brand is so strong that I've had conversations with consumers where they've said to me, I want a Bacardi and Coke and I hand them a rum and Coke with Bacardi in it. And they say, no, I didn't ask for rum. I asked for Bacardi. Mm, mm. So is that to me is a similar kind of way where I don't think that spice is a dirty word unless unless you unless you you it's taken away from people's desire to engage with rum as a category. That's when I think it is dirty because there's a lot more to rum than just spice rum. That's my view. Uh, and, and I think as well when you talk about it, would be quite interesting in that analogy is whether whether a lot of people actually who drink Captain Morgan or as it's known Morgan Spice, I think they've taken the word rum off the bottle, Keegan. I don't think the word rum appears on the bottle. Yeah, it's, it's spirit drink now. Maybe, maybe, maybe in the States because the, the laws in the States are very different. So uh, maybe in the Caribbean. But, you know, you might have a whole bunch of consumers that will have Morgan Spice. And as you know, it's the mo most commonly drunk with Coca-Cola. Um, and I would have a Morgan Spice and Coke. And... You, they some of them may not know that Morgan's is is, is actually a rum based drink as well. So uh, that could also be another factor yeah. where, where they say, "Oh no, I don't want spice rum. I want Morgan's." Right. Yeah. So the branding has become so so powerful that um, and as you said with the gateway rum, I think it's people keep saying that oh, people will start off with a sweet rum or we can have a show on sweetened rums at another time, but generally most spice rums are sweetened. Um, and let's be honest, um, the human palate loves sugar, right? It's, a, it's just a real fact of life that humans like sweet things. Um, and I still, you know, when you do tastings, random tastings, and you give somebody a nice, you know, people come around my house and I'll give them a, a nice, uh, a nice Appleton or four square or something like that. And they'll go, no, this is harsh. This is, this, this is burns. And then you give them something like Karuba spice. Oh, this is really nice, <laughs> right? And, and straight away, you sit there and you think, well, you know, who are we to say that they are wrong <laughs> in consuming what they like? They like the, the Karuba spice. Is, it's got those really lovely uh, sort of allspice and, 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 and fruity notes or orange and fruity notes with that, with that sweetness to it. And it, it just fits the human palate very easily. And I... Uh, and particularly, I mean, just the other day, Kelvin was doing a tasting. Um, and I think the three rums were Apperton, 12-year-old, Eldorado, 12, and a Plantation, 5-year-old. And it was three ladies, and all three of them says that the one they put at the bottom of the list was the Apperton, 12. They thought the Eldorado, 12 was the nicest. Um, they thought the Apperton, 12 was just too harsh. Um, the, as we know, the other two are sweetened, right? So this is a factor that we just can't get away from. And, and it's, you know, I, we like, and, and you talk about humans have a sweet palate, Lizette, but 
Caribbean, I think we've probably got a sweeter palate than anybody else in the world, haven't we? Not when it comes to our rum. It's weird. We love sugar in juice, uh -huh. in food. Um, we're not even big dessert people, you know, so it's, it but doesn't it's, follow through the dessert. A sweet palate, though. In, in, it's weird, though. But, but if we're going to have rum with something, we're going to have something sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when Campari is a big seller here, and it's not exactly typically sweet, it's a very bitter drink. Yeah. So I think the the Caribbean palate is very complex. They appreciate bitter where it's bitter, things like Marby, things like. Um, but I think they like their bitter a little bit on the sweeter side. But they mm. do like bitter. But they like bitter for it being bitter. And they like rum for it being strong. Um, mm. And they like you know juice for it being really sweet. They're you know if they want fruits, they want fruits. They want it to be really sweet, and so on. And puddings need to be sweet, as we spoke about in previous episodes. Um, but when it comes to their spice one, they also don't like that sweet. If you put sugar in it, they'll ask you, well, what really going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but but yeah, for a cocktail and they want it sweet. But then exactly, they like really sweet. But is it really them that like the sweet cocktails? I don't know because we're, we are appealing to a tourist market and they're usually the dictators of who want the cocktails. Mm -hmm. The cocktail mm -hmm. culture isn't quite ours yet. But mm. when we do make them, we make them sweet. So I don't really know who's dictating the market there. Right. It would be right. interesting to analyze if it's the bartender that's controlling the drink or if it's the consumer that's controlling the taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a point, isn't it? Chicken or the egg, isn't it? It's yeah, exactly. <laughs> the demand may be creating the supply. Yeah. I mean, we have got a very big American audience. Um, the, the European audience that we have don't, don't want sugar as much. So... I'm not really sure. Um, I guess Brits like a lot of sugar too. Um, but in terms of spice rum being a dirty word, I don't have a problem with spice rum per se because it is it is a natural part of the product that we consume here. But what I do have a problem with is when we have spice rums that isn't really spice, when it's synthetic flavorings, mm -hmm. then I have a problem because it's not really a spice rum. If you're using synthetic cinnamon flavor, and is it really a spice rum? But then commercially, they're not going to use real cinnamon, are they? That's but then the I just think it loses it there. I, as a purist, I would like to see that what you say is what you're giving me. And mm. so I think that then but, that's but where... Then, but then the question is, if you want to be a bit meta about it, is what is real and what is not? As in, is cinnamon... If I... If I, if I take natural cinnamon and I distill it and I extract the cinnamon. Well, that's different. And then I add it to the rum. Have yeah. I not gone through the same process of creating something that is cinnamon flavored? It's not cinnamon bits. It's not like lightning it infused. Essential it's oils, I don't have a problem with. Okay, that. But but yeah. if it's something that is like almost like uh, like yeah, like E5, some yeah, like yellow color. Yeah, there's laboratory flavored cinnamon. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're talking about on a mass production, now, I'm not talking about the small labels who yeah, yeah. like yeah. A, a bit of orange peel. <laughs> I'm talking about on a mass production when you're using synthetic orange flavoring, synthetic, you know, because to keep the cost down. Because, I mean, let's face it, if you're going to make a spice rum, a real spice rum, it's going to cost more. Because mm -hmm. you're taking yeah. rum and then you're adding spices, and spices aren't cheap anywhere in the world. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, um, when when people are finding ways to scale the product, I think it would, when I think it's a dirty word, to answer your question, yeah, yeah, yeah. when they're using marketing as a way to sell a product, then it becomes dirty because it's not an honest, it's not transparent product. And it's quite interesting because you mentioned a point there about um, uh, the unnatural flavors and the fact that a lot of uh, spiced rums on the market can they qualify as spice? Because before you joined, Mark and I were saying that um, at what point are we talking? Are we talking about flavored rums today or spiced rums? Where is the divide between yeah. a flavored rum and a spiced rum? And I said to Mark, "Well, I suppose really most flavored rums are either fruit forward, right? Um, a spice, a spice. There's, there's a difference between a spice and and, and fruit, isn't there? Yeah." You know, there is a clear difference in that respect. But um, uh, if you had a, there's so many 
and, and I think what spice rums have become in the modern day world are vanilla forward products. Exactly. Yeah, true. And, and, and I think that is, if, if you don't like vanilla or if you don't like, because vanilla and sugar can become very sickly sweet very quickly. If you add sugar to vanilla, it becomes a bit awkward too. And you end up just getting vanilla only. And then it not really it's not really a spice rum. It's like it's vanilla syrup in rum flavor or vanilla flavored rum um mm. rum or vanilla syrup flavored rum or something like that. And it just becomes very strange taste. But you, you can get vanilla flavoring, unnatural vanilla flavoring quite cheap. Okay. Whereas, yeah, you know, I'm not talking about real vanilla extract, because that uh, can, uh, but you know when you get these synthetic vanillas. Mm. They can get that, they can obtain that really cheap, add some other little liquids in there, loads of sugar to raise the volume almost or the intensity of that flavor. And it sells. You stick that with Coke, you don't even know what's going on. <laughs> True. Well, I mean, if you look at this one, Roger and I were talking about it. This is a, this is a chili and chocolate flavored rum. Wow. Nice. I'd love to enjoy that. Uh, now, it, it's titled as premium spirit drink, right? It's not, it's not categorized as a rum, even though it's forty-two point five percent. Is a rum bullion product, and I was very surprised when I tried it, and it actually is very tasty. Is it? Oh, I can't wait to try it. <laughs> it's very nice. It's not particularly sweet. It makes a really good, quite interesting kind of espresso martini style drink with a little. Because the little chili flavor comes through in it, but we were, we were, we were. I was saying, is this spiced or is this flavored? Because chili might be considered a spice, but chocolate or cacao or whatever isn't. That's not a spice. It kind of, especially. No, I think it is because I'm is not really sure. I don't know. You could correct me if I'm wrong. But are they using cocoa nibs rather than chocolate itself? Uh, hold on, I'll tell you where it's. Uh... What part, yeah, of, what part of the cacao are they using? It's a uh, Cariolo, Cariolo Cocoa Nibs. Is that? Right. Is, is that Criolo. Yeah. Criolo. yeah. So the thing with that is because the, the, the Criolo's nibs, I'm pretty sure it would come under the spice category. Okay. Because it is, I mean, the only thing is it's fermented. The cocoa will be fermented and dried. Um, so it would have a spice quality. It would have a spice quality rather than it's definitely not a fruit anymore as a cocoa pod because it's okay. been dried. So it's gone through a process. So I think I don't know. It, I don't know exactly, but it has, it's like a nut. You know, it, it's, it's more mm -hmm. like a nut with a spice quality. Mm -hmm. and actually, some, of the, some of the interesting um, methods we talk about the. the how everybody's got their own recipes and and how the com big commercial brands have cheapened it and so forth. Yeah. Um, and I came across this product some time ago in Puerto Rico. If Alex is still online, he should he he will know this product and um, Rondel Barolito. And then when I inquired locally, uh, and made some inquiries. They actually go for a different formula. They have ten secret ingredients. So it's technically and I, from what I understand, the spice is in those ten secret ingredients. And then they age it. In a in a, in a, some very old cherry casks, oh. so they they they're actually spicing it before aging it, um, rather than you would have thought most spice rums. If they use an aged rum, they would spice it after. Um, so you would obviously get that liquid with the spices in it interacting with these casks, these old cherry oh, casks. And it was it's it's quite fascinating to see. Um, uh, sort of the different methods that people are using to try and come up with their, their formulas and so on. So um, should, we, let, should we get a cocktail going? Let, should we get Manny um, to make it a, the first cocktail for the evening? And then we'll, we're going to show you, hopefully it'll come through, Manny's making this cocktail, and, um, uh, and then we will, um, uh, I will, I, I will, and then after we finish the cocktail, uh we you will gotta, you gotta put a video up and then um we will then have a little chat um about the cocktail so uh here's money hi guys uh today we're going to start off with the chairman's table car which is a signature served from uh chairman's spice or for chairman's reserve 
We're going to use the uh, Chairman Spice in this uh, drink here. It was invented by a man named Tony Gabu Abin at the Drake Hotel in San Francisco. Um, so it contains a couple of components that are um, iconic to um, the Caribbean. We're going to start off with a, uh, a shrub, which is a agriculture-based liqueur, um, which has lots of fruit notes for it. It's also spiced. Um, it's not to be mixed up with a shrub that's been popular in Europe in the last five years, which is basically a syrup that has been spiked with uh, vinegar. So the first component in this drink is um, 40 ml of lemon juice. Then it is 22.5 of the shrub. So this drink is a twist on a twist. The original drink that it descends from is a sidecar. It was then twisted in San Francisco by Mr. Abu. Um, the original drink, a sidecar, is a cognac based drink with uh, lemon juice. It has a sugar rim and triple sec. Um, we are replacing triple sec with a shrub, which has very similar properties. Then it's going to be 60 ml rum. There's no additional sugar in this drink because most of the components contain sugar. The shrub itself contains a little bit of sugar and it's fortified, and the spiced rum from Chairman's also has a little bit of sugar. Right. Um, so yes, so let me call up the recipe so that we can have a little chit chat about it. Um, um, we, uh, we, I must add uh, quite briefly, there you go. Um, it, the, the original recipe called for, um, like the side card, it actually called for a sugar, a cinnamon sugar rim. Um, which would obviously add that extra sweetness uh, for it, but you know, Manny felt as if it was on its own without the rim. It depends on your palate, really. It was uh, it was well balanced. Um, uh, the and this actually uh, is Chairman's Reserve. I think uh, I know for a fact that um, Lizette's going to probably agree with me. It's probably one of the better spice ones on the market. Yeah, definitely. For me, I, I think it's delicious. It's my top spice go-to rum right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm not a huge spice rum drinker, but if I have to use a spice rum to do anything with. In terms of commercially available spice rum, yeah, one would definitely be one of the, one of the first I would, I would go for. Reasonable right. price and commercially available for sure. Um, and 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 especially, I mean, it's. I don't know their process, but it, it feels as if it goes back to that argument that you had, Lizette, which is that are they using some natural um, flavorings within their, their in in making that spice up? Uh, I feel they may well be. Or it's something that we should need to ask uh, Michael or, or one of the guys at Chairman's. Yeah, uh, I can, all the solution bartenders who I know, one of the guys that that's been really well instrumental in. in Making rumbling work, one of my good friends, he, he's a big spice rum fan. And in fact, he will have, he has a bottle in his house here in London of basically exactly what you saw that came on style bottle with those bits of wood in it. And they top, they'll add rum. To it. So he kind of, they into that kind of thing. So I would suspect locally that's something that's very, it's very kind of common for them to be doing locally. I would, I would. They would. They wouldn't go and be putting some false flavoring into a product that would be solution in in any I don't know. I think that over the years it has changed as a product. Definitely, mm. as a consumer, I've noticed slight like, changes. I've noticed it's become more orangey 
and definitely more orange in colour. Mm -hmm. But I don't know the reason for that. So I guess if any St. Lucian distillers, um, people are on, then they can explain to us why it's become so orange. But it could just be because they're putting more orange in it, or it could be a little colouring. I don't know, but um, it would be interesting to know. But it still is really delicious, and it does taste very natural to me. Um, yeah. And, and, it's quite, and, and equally as well, I mean, as, as Manny explained in the video, the, the use of Creole shrub, because arguably shrub, uh, the French term for shrub, not to be confused with the, the vinegar-based um, uh, shrub that, we, that bartenders use. But shrub, is in, in effect, is also technically a spiced rum of sort, isn't it? Yes. Well, yeah, I guess so. I have to have a bottle of it somewhere up here. Yeah. Um, it, I, when I was in... Ooh, I can't remember what French island that was. I think it was Guadeloupe. But they, at the end of a dinner, would serve the shrub, um, you know, as a digestive. Yeah. And uh, it was quite delicious. The orange, of course. And, um, and it was a really nice end to a meal, served with just immediately with or after the dessert. I and mean, it was very nice. Right. And it's 40%. So it's... Uh... It's yeah. not a liqueur in the realist of senses, and that is not a like a low. It's not a low ABV. Um, no, but what was really nice about Manny's um, drink was it was so citrusy, which just is nice. You know, the lemon, the orange from the Creole, the Chairman's Reserve. It's so nice. Well, and well, blessed, well. Um, whoever was there with him could um, get to try it. It looked. Oh, well. Well. Uh, well, uh, it, it was uh, yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure I've tried it. I've tried it as well. It's pretty tasty. But let's let's go back to Manny and let's um, let us uh, uh, go to another cocktail. Uh, his second one yeah, of the, the evening. The next drink we're going to cover is the hot fudge rum. Um, probably the most iconic of the spice rum drinks. It probably was a birth of spice rum because originally it was made with regular rum. And then spices added to it and texture in order to make it palatable and medicinal. A lot of cocktails evolved from being originally uh, medical purposes, like the uh, hot toddies were originally drunk because people were feeling ill, or a drink we covered last week, the Kanchanchara, was drunk by freedom fighters to fight off colds. Um, so this drink uh, calls for spice drunk. In this case, we're going to use Kraken because it has those lovely vanilla notes. That is going to complement um, the the pumpkin and the, the all spice notes. So we're going to start with 50 ml of the kraken. Now we're going to build this drink in the glass in a similar way you would a hot toddy. Um, the next to follow is um, 50 ml of demerara sugar. Dairy 
that is, the pumpkin in it, I, I wasn't expecting that. And the pumpkin is was a surprise ingredient for you. Yeah, yeah. But I could but again in these times of of you know gluten, dairy, vegan, um, different kinds of things, I think that's a that's a really sensible um it's almost like using um chickpea water aquafaba instead of egg instead of egg right that type of that, that i like that that's a really interesting concept yeah, I love it. yeah and, and and i thought when i found the recipe the pumpkin uh yeah you had that it's yeah, the recipe called for pumpkin pie or puree um i didn't know this but apparently you can buy pumpkin pie in a can Right, as a canned uh, product, which is so I first ever came across that, but I didn't find any pumpkin pie, so I, I cooked down the, the, the pumpkin and then uh, okay. and jarred it into a puree. Um, so that was um, and gave it to Manny. So that was um, a nice little twist. And as you said, I think the pumpkin did would add that texture that you're looking for and bring a different flavor component that. You know, would 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 make it something a little bit more interesting than you, you just your regular uh, vom syrup and, and and hot water. I was e I was even thinking it probably makes it a bit more, if you want to say more Caribbean in it in 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 a real sense in terms of because all of those things there are, you know, pumpkin and those kind of flavors with all spice and those things are things that you would be eating in the Caribbean. That drink I. Would, that drink feels very strangely homely in a way that I would not have expected to be having. Just looked at it, and 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 and, and a hot buttered rum traditionally as well as Manny was explaining as a spiced rum. It, the old fashioned version of a hot buttered rum is that you actually use normal rum and you added your spices yeah. while you were making the drink. So it wasn't something that was spiced rum forward. Um, but here's an opportunity that if you haven't got the time or you haven't got the spices available to you, that you can actually use a spice of rum in order to create that that drink and, and, and that sort of bedtime drink where you get a little bit of rum, your spices, and, um, you know, keep that flu away a little bit. So um, um, not sure whether you need to be drinking that Lisette in the Caribbean. Well, I was about to say I, I, I love hot buttered rum I really do especially coming up to this time of the year which is a bit Christmassy mm -hmm. um, I just put normal butter in it or make a butter batter with a bit of ice cream and other things and butter so it is it's a very indulgent luxurious drink in the AC to drink when it's raining outside but this breaks all the rules and the pumpkin I can't wait to try and I think that, I mean, because we're closer to America here, we get that whole Thanksgiving thing. So you are able to buy the pumpkin pie batter in right. a, because the American um, uh, visitors or citizens, they make their pie for Thanksgiving. But I will probably make it with fresh pumpkin um, and puree it right down. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. You might easily have in your garden right now anyway, so... You know, and pumpkin is a big part of, of our food. Is why I say this that yes, chew yeah. pumpkin, all of that. Yeah, we, I, I, there, there's very few things I don't put pumpkin in. I put pumpkin in my peas if I'm making pilau, I put pumpkin in it. If I'm making okra and rice, I put a piece of pumpkin in it. Pumpkin is a is a very staple part of yeah, regular well, diet. I actually I like using pumpkin, especially in soups as well. Yeah, yeah, in soup too, you must. You, you give a little. Flavor, body, texture. So I buy pumpkin. I, I buy a whole pumpkin, and then what I'll do is I'll I'll, I'll cut it up, cube it, and then bag it, bag the cubes, and put it in the freezer. So anytime, anytime I need pumpkin, I just take how many cubes out of the freezer that I need. That um, is, you been I I I was I was going to say, but we 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 went to the same school. I buy a I have if I buy a pumpkin, I peel in it, cut it up, put it in a ziploc. And I used in pumpkin for weeks, months after something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and a great, great, uh, a great, great ingredient. And I, thought, I yeah. think very well would work very, very much um, within within that. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I really, I, as I said, it was um, something that I enjoyed uh, thoroughly. Um, uh, and I think when you talk about a hot buttered rum, I think um, because of that recipe there, you don't have the butter. 
I think that, that you, you're looking for that texture from the pumpkin, aren't you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the pumpkin goes so much better with spice. It's yeah. just such a yeah, note. I would have never thought of that. And it's, it's great. I don't know how we have the whole world. Has yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, who, who came up with that? I'm like, whoever, whoever you are. Dude. Yeah, well, Manny, yeah. yeah. yeah no, no, that's, that's, that, that's a fantastic. That's a really right. Well, let's kick on to the next recipe. Um, the so. next thing we're going to cover is the old gorgon from the Kitty Hawk in Sydney. Um, now, this uh, drink um, is a combination of a stout reduction. I'm assuming it's Guinness because it's the most iconic stout. There's real multi notes in that, which is going to complement spiced rum. So, the first ingredient we're using in this case, we're going to use uh, Blackwell spiced rum, which has, it's not heavily spiced and not heavily sweetened. It has a little bit of uh, vanilla notes in there, which will kind of complement those malt. This is a star reduction, in this case it's Guinness, a Guinness syrup. Uh, there's 30 minutes of that, 60 minutes of rum, and then it is 15 lemon and 15 sugar. Now, the balance of this drink is quite delicate. It seems like star are big flavors and spice rum are big flavors, but they come together quite well. The synergy is great. One other positive thing about the Guinness production, it gives you a really nice viscosity for the filter. That was really nice. Mm. Delicious. Yeah. Um, while uh, so before any debates come on board, let me just uh, call up quickly is um, uh, Blackwell. Uh, this is a product uh, from Jamaica called Blackwell Black Gold Spiced Rum. Um, so I don't. If anybody has any information, I don't know how it. Uh, compares uh, sort of the recipe wise with uh, Blackwell's that is commonly sold internationally. Um, uh, but um, this is definitely says black gold spiced one from Blackwell's on it. There you go. I just, so, want to say, I just want to catch up on the comments. There's been some good comments. We want to say hi to Sean because she's like big dust up in every way. And Clive o. Edwards in a can, I guess, yeah, he's talking about the pumpkin. Yeah. And Keegan says, pumpkin roti at trailer. <laughs> so, <laughs> <the trailer. laughs> so I, this is one of my, so this recipe was actually one of my favorites. I mean, I, um, uh, we actually debated as to um, what uh, rum we should use in the recipe in terms of uh, what would work. We felt as if it should have been a, a, a dark rum to work well with the stout. Um, but I love I love stout reduction. I was saying to Manny how much um, stout reduction for me. I could use stout reduction in so many things. I, I make an old-fashioned with stout reduction because I just love the flavours that the, the stout gives. So when it's sweetened into a, when it's reduced down to make a lovely syrup. But um, uh, drink was absolutely gorgeous as well. And, uh, and you know, just so people, you know, again, just a different variety from what, what you used to. What do you guys think about it? Delicious. I, I think I've tried something like this at Lackey, maybe. I'm not sure. I, I know I had something start reduction. And I've also tried it in Bahamas. Um, they use start reduction on their wings, can you believe it? They have these delicious chicken wings there with start reduction. And they have a drink that goes with it. So you can buy it as a pair. Um, it, it's a cocktail. I, they're obviously not calling it Old Grogham. It's something 
Guinness and something, blah, blah. But they reduce the stout, and then you get these stout wings very good together. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I thought of it was one of my favorites. Uh, this and maybe the next one that, that man is going to do is probably my two favorites. But, um, uh, this, uh, this was really, really tasty. And, and you know, the stout reduction just really sort of complemented the spice bomb. And uh, mm. I would have thought maybe even something like the Kraken would have probably worked. A nice, a dark spice bomb uh, might have worked with that. I was thinking whether I should have tried the Pussers. Pussers has some, they do a spice bomb as well. Oh, yeah. Which obviously has some very, um, um, there's a pasta spice, which it's not a dark one, but it's got some very, you know, pasta that heavy, um, Guyanese sort of flavor profile that, it, that I felt would have worked with the spice bomb reduction, with, with the sauce reduction as yeah. well. The, the, the Kraken, I would agree with, um, as well, like you said, that, that would work really nice with the stout and then the lemon. It looks so delicious, like the whole drink. Oh, yeah. yum! Yeah, I've never had. I can't say that I've I've had a cocktail with had a stout reduction. In. I've had cocktails with stout before, and I've used stout to barbecue a lot. Um, and I with a bit of sweetened, maybe a bit of um. Uh, coconut nectar or a bit of mm -hmm. barbecue or a bit of honey or that kind of thing. So definitely I could see that drink working. In fact, I was very jealous of looking at the drink. Yeah. It looks like a, it looks like a I mean, a mini Guinness with the head on it and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Let's crack on and let's get the next, um, the next drink. We have two more drinks for you. So let's crack on and get uh, the next one going. Which was being invented by Wayne Curtis, authors of one of the most famous rum books ever, and the bottle of rum. Um, it was most recently documented in Intoxica, which is a book by Beach from Berry. Um, this is a very herbaceous um, punch drink. I mean, it's a loosely named punch because the ratios doesn't really fit the, what you would expect from a punch. In this case, we're going to use um, four square spice rum. In terms of the spectrum of spice rum, it's very light um, in terms of sugar content and it's not overly spiced. Um, it is created by Richard Seal, who's at the forefront of rum making in the Caribbean now. Um, uh, famously creating four square products such as Dorney's. He also um, creates products for the European market, which are unbelievable. Um, and he is pushing to have less sugar used in rum. Um, so in this case, it is. 30 ml spiced rum, then it is 30 ml of the Creole shrub. Sixty ml grapefruit. Okay. Now this is white grapefruit specifically. Okay. It's going to complement those absinthe notes. A little more than pink grapefruit would because it can be a little bit overpowering. Next, we're going to add, it calls for six drops. This bar spoon is about five mil. And then finally, is angle for bitters. One dash. We're currently in Milroy's of Soho, where they use a lot of angus for bitters. So They've removed the dash bottle from this Angostura. So we're going to spoon it in. It's a lovely bar. Um, we're in the book currently. If you want to taste anything green that has whiskey in it, come down here. Upstairs, they have a shop too. Garnish 
express that bottle over the top. No need to rub the glove because we don't overpower it. And here we go. Mmm. Sensational. That's my favourite yet, actually. The, the absinthe really brings out those bright citrus notes. Um, and the rum is not overly sweet, so it really allows that drink to be balanced. Fantastic drink. That was probably up there with uh, with a favorite as a favorite of mine. Um, you had to convince me on the absence, but I suspect the balance. If it's not a lot of it, um, yeah, because I'm not a huge absent lover myself. But I'm curious about the drink, though. Uh, I'm curious about the drink because of the kind of spicing in absent anyway. Those those notes and the fact that we're talking spice here and there's spice rum and all this. You know, and the Creole shrub and all that stuff. I, I suspect the, the 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 spice complexity in your mouth of that drink is probably mad because there's so much going on there in terms of flavor. Ah, oh, amazing! It was absolutely a stunning drink, and I think you'd be surprised. I mean, I'm not a, a huge absinthe sort of um, person either, but I you it, the, the small amount of absinthe just helps to to, to sort of bring it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. But yeah. it's, it's, it's spice everywhere. There's bitters. There's the absinthe. There's it's literally a spice bomb with with grapefruit juice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drink. Yeah. And and I was sort of looking at these sort of recipes and and I and I, I came across some more as well, which we we're happy to share on our social media. Um, I know that I haven't been posting much the last week or two, but, but I will do. I'll get them all. I'll get as much as possible. On, on the social media, and that will be on Caribbean Rum Chronicles on Facebook and Carib Rum Chronicles on Instagram. Uh, if you Google Caribbean Rum Chronicles on Instagram, it will come up with our name, Carib Rum Chronicles, um, and we'll be posting more and more of the recipes and pictures of, of what we've done. Uh, and we're going to start sort of doing more and more. We've come up with some ideas on giving you guys some more posts, uh, but it's just adding more work for us, but never mind. Um, we're quite happy to, to, to do the work and get you guys to enjoy some of these recipes at home. Um, and this one is uh, I, the last recipe before we're gonna, uh, we're just fractionally over time, but we're gonna try and stay as close to the hour as possible. Um, we're doing really well, Roger. Yeah. Um, one, so, um, we're gonna um, we're doing really well today because we want to try and be a bit more disciplined. So uh, let's get the last one. And this one, Mark, this is gonna bring a chuckle to your uh, to you because it, uh, Manny did this in honor of you. Uh, <laughs> but okay. Let's talk about it. Why I know you're gonna laugh. Anyway, oh, sure, sure, sure. here we go. Right. So the last drink that we're gonna make is a Caribbean Rum Chronicles creation. Is a combination of myself and Mark um, had some ideas. He um, previously has brought a soul syrup to me. I kind of boosted it up a little bit. This drink contains a soul reduction with a demerara sugar, so it's a two to one syrup with those natural hibiscus and cloves spices. I've had a little bit of ginger. You may not like that. <laughs> and then it's also boosted with a fresh spot bonnet. For a short period of time, so it's, a, it's going to be a spiced daiquiri. Um, for the base, we're going to use um, Adamia spiced rum, which is a spiced rum which is taken to Italy. It's a blend of rums from the Caribbean. I'm not sure what the blend is, they don't disclose that. Um, which are taken to Italy and then they're blended by a guy named Daniele Nalapolo, who owns a bar in Miami called Exotico. He also has a bar in Rome. Um, so we're going to add 50 ml of this spice rum here. Now this spice rum is very clove forward um, and the rum base itself has a lot of funk so we can believe there is definitely some Jamaican in there which is why I've added the ginger to the sorrel, the right way to make sorrel. Then we're going to add one which is uh, 25 ml. <laughs> Yeah. And then the sorrel and scotch bonnet syrup is going to be 30 ml.
insert that in the coop. I see why you 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 make you you make money poke poke at me by putting ginger in the drink and saying that the argument is but that but 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 it's exactly that you don't need I mean I, yes he did put ginger in there but you know <laughs> but it looked fantastic it looked good, though. It looked good though. I'm sure I'm sure the drink was delicious so um, you know when I was writing up the recipe. Right, so as you can see here, we've got 50 mils of the Alamea spice rum, 30 mils of soul steeped with scotch bonnet, and 25 mils of fresh lime juice. Yeah, yeah. Then, uh, Manny was saying to me, but shouldn't you put 30 mils of soul uh, and mention that it's with ginger? I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, supposed well, have, it's supposed to have ginger. No, it, we can't have no, it's supposed to have ginger. No. It's supposed to have ginger. necessary. If you didn't want the ginger, I would have put 30 mils of salt without the ginger. <laughs> I, we have this with, no, 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 no. You no. have soul or ginger beer. You don't have soul with ginger with, in it. Again. Uh, uh, you, guys can keep trying. you guys can keep trying. But uh, fantastic drink. Uh, but it looks good, though. It looks good. It looks good. Really good. And I, I love it. That is a real Christmas drink, eh? A yeah. real Christmas drink. Yeah. Yes, so that has that is a real Caribbean Christmas ring because there's, yeah. there's everything in it: clove, clove, sorrel, ginger, Thank all you. the other spices Thank that kind of come along with that. Yeah, I I definitely look forward to getting the syrup and trying, especially with the fact that there's a little bit of Scotch bonnet element in it. That yeah, is Scotch bonnet, I think is going to give you that different that, that that different edge, isn't it? And most yes. definitely yeah. going to give you something that your we we would not have expected from it. So, and um, I'm, glad that, I'm glad that my my syrup was able to inspire. I'm not saying that the ginger was necessary, but <laughs> I wasn't there, and I know that because I wasn't, it, I wasn't there. Roger was able to. I to, never influenced him at all. Don't give me that. I know. I never that influenced him at all. Yeah, but, yeah. You telling me that here. Yeah. And oh, just okay. so that you guys can finish off here, just what I've done is just uh, I can share this at some point, uh, but just an idea of how many spiced rums uh, come out of the Caribbean. I've limited the list as much as possible without having too many independent brands because uh, there's a lot of independent brands that are made outside of the Caribbean. Um, I try to try and limit it to the ones that are actually made in the Caribbean. Um, and there's, 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 you know, there's so many Puerto Rico, obviously Bacardi do a number of spice, um, uh, Black Beard in Puerto Rico, uh, Bounty in St. Lucia, Brindley Gold from uh, making a spice from, from St. Kitts. Yeah, I've tried that once. Uh, Bougal, obviously the Captain Morgans, uh, Chairman's we discussed, the Carubas, Don Q makes a spice from as well, um, Kuzan from the USVI. Uh, elements eight El Dorado make a spice rum. I don't think we get that over here, um, but they I've do. Never seen El Dorado spice actually. But they do make a spice from as well. Belize Fiesta Four Square. And and there, there is a Vat Nineteen spice that is very rarely that is made by Fernandez, which obviously is Angostura. But I've never seen it properly exported. I've only seen it in random corner shops. So I don't know what the idea of the product is either. I I've never. I actually didn't know about that one. I would have put that on the list. A couple from the French Caribbean, Le Morne make a spiced rum, so does a longer toe. Uh, okay. Macoucherie, obviously, in Dominica, um, Pussas, uh, and so on. Um, uh, and there was many, many spiced rums. So, um, we'll have, as I said, we'd be happy to share that at some point um, on our social media. So, if anybody wants it, uh, we can get that to you. Um, uh, and I will 
most definitely share it with with the rest of the crowd. So, uh, so yes, for once, ten past eight, and we can say farewell. We've done our little bit on spice drums. Cool. Uh, we will obviously have a, an episode in, in the future on flavor drums, uh, which covers a different aspect of drums, um, and obviously we'll get Manny making some cocktails with it. Um, but uh, and any final words from you guys? Will you guys, uh, uh, will you guys drink use spice ones? You've used spice ones in, in cocktails before, haven't you, Mark? Yeah, we use it. Um, I mean, obviously, it's not advertised on my menu specifically as spice rum. Mm. We do have. I mean, we we cater into the generally the average drinker. So we are the races or sporting events. So people, we have to have it. So we cannot. Offer spice rum as a as an option. Um, I have done stuff with uh, with Bounty in the past. I've done, we've done stuff with Dead Man Fingers in the past. So we use it, and you know th there is demand for it. Um, and I would say that you know more people drink spice rum than any other kind of rum that I could think of in terms of just average drinkers. So and I think that'll that'll continue. Right, and 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 Lizette, would you have a, a, a homemade spice rum in rum boat retreat for people? Yes, we have we have some great homemade spice rums, ones that are a little bit lemony or citrusy, um, with more peels and so on. And then we've got the real spices with the roots and the barks and so on. And then we'll mix them accordingly. Um, yeah, so and we're a big spice rum island because and Clark's Court do a spice rum and some of the other. Companies here. I think actually, I think Classical is the only one that I would recommend. They do a spice one, but it's quite mild on the spice, though. I would say, um, yeah. And Clive and Clive says, "Wow, so early." Yes, Clive, <laughs> we are working on time. So thank you very much. We're getting it concise, getting everything we need. We are getting much better with that, guys. And just and on that point, we hope you tune in for a couple of weeks in a couple of weeks' time. Um, and yes, Keegan, Element 8, I did mention, it's still available. You can still find Element 8 Spice in some shops, but get it while you can, because I don't think the Element 8 brand is no longer uh, in existence. So they don't... I wish I could find some of the, the Element 8 cacao, though. That oh, was, well, I wish yeah, I could. that one was a boss. That, yeah, that, that was, that's still my, that's my number one chocolate flavor rum. Yeah. Yeah, that was amazing. That was yeah. amazing. So guys, take care. Bye. And uh, 8, 8.15 and we're tuning out. So we're only 15 minutes over on a new scheduling of one hour. So That's thank right. you for joining us and I uh, hope to see you again in a couple of weeks. Keep your questions and keep following us on social media. Bye-bye. <laughs>